The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 11, NASDAQ up 32, S&P's up 5.5, gold. Gold's flat, 14.98 an ounce. We have silver down 9 cents, $18.08 .08 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 29 cents, $57.69 a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year down 8 ticks. 129.29, 30 year off 22 at 160.25. Now, it's going to get interesting there is that you did have volume on the way down yesterday in that note and bond market. Now, there's still lighter volume we're going against. It looks this morning, we'll, we'll pull it up and we get going here. Uh, it looked this morning about an hour ago that the volume was contracting dramatically, though. King dollar, King dollar, 368 ticks trading at 98.225. The euro is at 109. The yen is at 107.74, and the pound is at 123 to one U.S. dollar. Let's get over and take a look at these small caps. So the news, um, you know, Kevin was talking about it yesterday. We were talking about the rotation out here. Yes. And it's pretty dramatic. Uh, you know, there's, there was an article um, last night that the this hasn't happened the amount of move inside the small caps yesterday uh starting what was day was yesterday monday no starting monday probably yeah. okay you can see the movement as in monday right. zoom it in go for it Keep monday it. and then yesterday yes. uh this was about the most dramatic move uh in a rotation that okay. the market has seen in like 10 years okay and the this guy is, i believe it was a guy from morgan stanley that was coming out it was talking about it and what he was saying or maybe jp morgan what he was saying is that the, he thinks it's only the beginning of it that the they're selling the momentum stocks and they're finally i, I think uh, it might have been largest inflow maybe and they're finally no, that's, that's and they're okay. finally uh, and looking to go after value you okay. know so uh you know we'll see how that shakes because out because yesterday the russell was man up mammoth numbers yes. when the rest of the indices were pretty close to around flat come Tot the end of the day exactly yeah exactly um so if we go take a look at this what you're going to see is that now the iwm granted it's high is a year ago july Okay. You know, so this is not you know, like the best thing in the world. But the bottom line is that look at that volume yesterday, 29 million shares. Now you're going against 38, but that's still not bad when you're basically getting into a supply line, you get that kind of volume. That's a big number. Uh, if we take a look at the NDX 100, you know, you take a look at the NDX, bottom line is that, you know, it, it just doesn't have it, you know. You don't see that type of expansion. Nope, you know, right. yesterday we actually went low with 23 million. You know, we'll see how this handles it today. Yeah. So that's going to get really interesting. Um, how that uh, whole thing shakes out. You know, you have you have the, you do have the rotation happening. The real question is going to be, do you get the rotation and then they uh, then they all go south? <laughs> uh, notes. Now this is pretty cool. Okay, so this is something you really want to wrap your head around. So. We're on the Z contract. This is the 10 year. Okay. And what you're going to see is that, you know, we had a big expansion of volume yesterday. I mean, sure. that's 2 million contracts. Now, when I bring up the contract that we just rolled from, you're going to see that we're going into 3 million. So it's still less. But anytime that you do see an expansion like that, it's like, okay, we have sellers here. There's sellers. The real question is going to be the low of yesterday was 129.26. So we got below that today. And are you going to get the two million contracts? You know, we'll we'll see. It's still early, and it's 883 right now, which is you know, which is some contract volume. There's no doubt about that. Um, we work. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about we work this morning upstairs look, look at uh, before this, we came on the this, program. You know, and, and this is pretty intense, folks. Okay, so there's there's a couple of really good stories out here. Um, the, the the first one we could put, the founder's fortune plunges. Yeah, I don't have too much sympathy for him. I'm still yeah. I'm sure he's still going to be doing just fine. <laughs> he is. He's, he's yeah. now, now they figure uh, he's at $3 billion. Uh, Okay. He, you know, I, go ahead. Where are you going? Go ahead. Because I see 14. The, uh, yeah. Okay, so 
that that, that would have that would have at, at 65 billion. They're, they're talking about still uh, the, the okay. gold. That the gold would have pegged him. Let, yeah. let's, okay, then let's right. just go through right. it. As a so what it happened, folks? Now this is really intriguing. So whether it's I'm not sure whether it was two months ago, Goldman had pegged this when they were pushing out that they had to get 65 billion as an IPO. Okay. That, that would have pegged him at 14 billion just on that part of it. Okay, okay? for his 22 percent stake. Exactly. Cool. And that uh, would have put him into the top 150 richest people in the world. Pretty right, remarkable. Right. But <laughs> never good to start a sentence <laughs> with exactly, but. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's going to be more modest. Still, 22 percent of the company. Just do some. That's and then there's the next one, right? It's going to be uh, at as low as 15 billion now. That would leave Newman with a stake of three billion. I don't right. have too much sympathy. Not and that's where we talked about these stories yesterday, right? Where he tried to capitalize on the um, the rights to the the patent or the yes. for we for five point nine million dollars. Right. Okay, so he's just nickel and diming to him, right? Oh yeah. And so he's like, oh, don't worry, I'm going to give that five point nine million back because maybe there's some worry that I shouldn't have done that, and there's greater worry. Yeah, listen to that stuff because that means nothing. What else is going on, you know? And that's why maybe as low as fifteen billion right. corporate governance problems, no profit. Right. Now, what's really cool in here, folks, and this is where you know we were kind of talking about this yesterday, as this, the as you just said about governance yes. in general, and you know what you can push paper out at. So picture this. This came out last night when I was on the air. Regulatory filings show that an, one of the earliest investors for Fidelity Investment. They cut their valuation of We Company to 18.3 billion. Guess when, folks? In March. Yeah. So all these banks knew this, okay? But yet they they were basically going to push, push, push. And when you read the whole the full story, okay, about how they cut it. Yes. They cut their own value. They went. Fidelity has gone in twice. Okay? okay. Once they were at a very low price. The second time they were at a higher price. Okay. Okay. There, whoever decides to do sure. that, I'm not sure how that works, okay? Bottom line, you know, the, the, the thing that's really, what I really love about that is that, you know, Phil is a great name anyway, okay? Yes, for, but for sure. But when you mock to mock it, because, like, if you and me were an investment in one of those funds, which they are, it's kind of neat that they were way ahead of the crowd, and they cut that, because that's what yep. shows up in your statement, folks. Right. That's, that's the bottom how, you line. Know, you get to borrow against that. You can do a lot of funny business when everything. you start. But guess what? It's come to roost recently. Where, you know, you can only do that for so long. Right. And so the other side is that you can always raise it when the IPO comes, right? Then it's that, a huge windfall. Okay. Right. As opposed to if you put it on your books at even $47 billion, which would be a fair estimate because that's the last round they raised at. So that's not funny business. When, no, that, that's right. They had you, done both. Wait, that, and that's why most companies would just keep it at the last round of funding because yeah. that is the last time that it was marked to market on a real scenario yeah um right but they weren't even comfortable with that no they were a lot I they agree. you know uh, and I you know agree. so it's pretty it's pretty wild when you when you think about it that it was out there the whole time and now could you imagine if you you were ready to buy into that ipo and you're another institution and then all of a sudden you find out that the, the, the bank has been basically saying to you that, hey, this is worth this. And then you find out the Fidelity had mocked his down to 18. Because they, they mocked a loss. They, they paid more than that. Yeah. So they mocked it. Crazy. Uh, it's, it's we'll have to talk about it even a little bit more because it's remarkable that 12, they've raised more than 12 billion. The market might, okay. it might only be worth 15 or 16 billion. Um, and they get into this 5.9 million down here we talked about. We'll finish wow. it up after the Stay break. right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow, Dow's up 33, Nasdaq's up 44, S&P's up 7.5. Uh, gold's up 3 bucks. We'll see uh, if that uh, decides to catch a bid. You get the notes and bonds. You get the 10-year uh, down 5 ticks, the 30 off 16. So it's going to be a big day out here in the notes and bonds. Uh, when we were just showing you the amount of volume that we had yesterday, you know, we've tested that low out here. Now, if we can get lighter volume, we get a rejection of price. Okay. That, that would be like, okay, man, we got action. Speaking of action, let's finish up that conversation, yeah. man, because I couldn't help just keep digging into this article. So there's a, a number of things here. So since its founding, We Company has raised more than $12 billion. They might only be worth 15 or 17, so they're going to have as much, you know, it's amazing that you can raise $12 billion. I mean, I could raise $12 billion, and guess what I'd be worth? $12 billion, because I'd have $12 billion sitting in my bank, you know, that's raised. Unless, uh, unless you're buying things and get a loss, which they have. Right, right, right. Yeah, you can always have right. debt. But I'm just saying, you could raise $12 billion if people would buy equity in your company for $12 billion. Right. Well, then you'd have $12 billion sitting in the bank, and that's what ben, the company's worth, $12 billion. Right, <laughs> it's right. like, it's amazing. Uh, so they, and this is where I started to talk about. So one of the things, the company, formerly known as WeWork, bought its current name from the two founders, Newman and McKelvey, for $5.9 million. So now it's called We Company. Okay, so imagine. And they were on the we're board. TFNN, so they, they imagine we're TFNN, and we're like, we're going to change the name to TF. Right. Well, guess what? We own TF, me, though. Me and you but, sell it and we'll them. sell it to TFNN for <laughs> $6 million. You right. can have the name TF. That's yeah. basically what they did, folks. Pretty remarkable. Right. And they got caught doing it. And so they said, ah, we'll, we'll unwind that. We'll wind that back. We'll give the $6 million. Yeah, that's worrisome because they don't care about $6 million, okay? They care about $6 billion. Right. And that's where it gets down to the... Next line, okay, so that they talk about several arrangements drawn scrutiny. Newman maintains voting control, three-class share structure. That a little bit in its own right. You should be skeptical when you're buying equity in a company and you don't have voting shares. And then you really get down that the firm rents space in four what buildings. Go ahead, did I miss one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I did, the last and, part of it. And yep. that yeah. he's been criticized as of borrowing the firm's money, yes. leasing properties he owns back to the company, and selling chunks of, chunks, chunks yeah. of entity equity before the IPO. Sure. 
you know, great CEOs that truly believe in the future value of their company. Yeah. Like Zuckerberg, to his credit, he was not dumping shares right. ahead of their IPO. Right. Um, now, he has his own problem with cor corporate governance, Zuckerberg. Yeah. But then, so here, the form rents space in four buildings owned by Newman. According to, the, according to the prospectus, this isn't just, you know, right. speculation. It signed a lease on three of them the day he obtained the stake and committed to being a tenant in them within the next year. So he buys a building. Hours later, he has we company sign the lease that they're going to be a tenant. And if he's borrowing money from the company to buy the building <laughs> to get the lease. Seriously? I mean, just, you know, and then add on top of that, it's one thing if you're plowing into profits, okay? No, right. they're plowing into losses with the CEO being totally conflicted with investor money. Um, and then, I mean, this deal with selling that, you know, that's outright robbery. That's basically stealing $6 million from investors, in my opinion, where you say, yeah. you know, we're going to change the name and you got to pay the CEO $6 million to change the name. That that should be they criminal. They need a little walking around It should be money. criminal, man. It should. So, yeah, they, they unwound that. Nonetheless, man, we'll see how it shakes out. I think it's going to continue to be some headlines for sure. So, we got oil, too, right? We sure do, man. It is Wednesday. Let's pull this up. We're going to get that oil. And that oil market's been moving, man. It sure is. And for some reason, this isn't letting me. We'll have to jump back to it because you seen that? We'll refresh yeah. it, maybe, Nothing's my screen. Happening. Let's see. We're refreshing the screen right now. There we go. We're going to get it. Okay. We'll pull over the terminal up here. We'll close out some of these screens. And it is 1022 right now. We're going to jump into commodities. We're going to look at crude oil, talk about a market with some volatility recently. We're going to see $60 oil, man. $160 oil. We've been close. It almost hit it yesterday. It did. We'll back before. it up again. No, yeah, you were it right. Uh, no, it's Tuesday. We were wow. up to 58.75. I mean, talk about within almost a dollar and a dollar in oil. We then we go from 10:45 yesterday morning, about 24 hours ago, and you drop more than a buck fifty by the time 2:30 rolls around. Yeah. And then we're back up to above 58. So you got oil trading 57.65. We're looking at the October contract again. We're coming into those 10:30 EIA numbers. Let's take a quick look at 11 a.m. What kind of volatility we're going to have priced into these options? So we're going to have 57.25 or 58 dollars is our ability at 11 a.m kind of equidistant away from those. We're right. looking at about 30 to 35 cents away. Now, again, if you're just looking directionally, that's where it's actually a nice sweet spot because you're not paying it a is. ton of premium. Let's just say you're bullish. And we've got a lot of movement in that market. Definitely. You know, and this is where you're, you're only eight pennies away from market. Now, seven pennies away from market. You're buying a 57.73 and you're basically getting a two to one risk reward where your losses are capped at 57.25, you have almost a full dollar to the upside, and for that risk reward, that's where you just have to make, you know, decide for yourself. You're buying it at 57.75, the real market's at 57.68, you're yeah. buying it at seven pennies above the market. Right. Not a bad trade with the earnings about to come, though, in my opinion. And the same thing would set up on the other side, which is not bad. But let's see where we line up on the noons. Okay, noons are going to have 57.75. That's a lot closer, right? That's about seven, eight pennies. So there would be your bullish spread. Now, this is where, again, the last trade we looked at was only about seven pennies away from the market, right? This is why, now, the risk-reward is going to be a staggering more like five to one, six to one. But, but by doing that, you're also paying 30 cents above premium. And that's where it really okay. gets tough, right? The right. last trade, much closer to a futures trade, you're only paying seven pennies above market exactly. for a two to one. You want to be risking 20 to make 130? Well, you're going to be paying 30 cents or so forth above the market, right? Because that's how they correlate. So here's your bullish. And as we're saying it, it's ticking up right to that 57.75, which would be nice because then would have no intrinsic value on either side, would just be paying premium. And it's going to be a little pricey, as you might expect, right? So we're at 57.72, call it. The bullish spread costing us 23. The bearish spread, which is the one with about four pennies of intrinsic value, 27, 50 bucks on the dot. So you would need 50 cents of movement away from 57.75, which is almost where we're at right now. Right. In either direction. That's yes. the key part, right? You get 50 cents of movement in either direction, you break even, but 50 cents, you know, it's a little movement for both it sides. It's and as would make By sense. noon, too. By noon, so correct. Like and just before, I just wanted to see the 230s as if they line up at all. So 58 would be our only option um, for the dailies, which is about 30 cents or more. And so we're dealing with October. <coughs> oh, so this is interesting. Look at this. I mean, you got up there with volume yesterday, you know, 700. 
65,000. It was a big day. 000. We shot yeah. up there, and then, like I said, by 2.30, you were back down to 57 and change. Yeah. So, you know, most times what, what tends to happen here is that, oh, well, look at them. Then, oh, yeah, another one bites the dust. That's Well, you so, know what that was, right? Yeah, that's what's when Bolton bit the dust. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So what I'm talking about, folks, is when, 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 just zoom when in, you right, bit yeah. the dust there, you, you, what you had is that you had oil shot down from a 58.41 down to 57.30. A buck ten in no time. And, and there's volume the down there. Yeah. And then it was interesting, though, by the end of the day. Look at that 4.30. Oh, yeah. The market said, you know what, man? Bolton wasn't probably the one <laughs> that we should be afraid of in terms of foreign policy, if that's really what you're worried about in terms of, yeah. you know, the president, he decides a lot, as any president does. But right. so. Yeah, so, you know what, I'd, I'd go that the yeah, others can get tested again. It, it, it did get tested. It, it came down there in the middle of, uh, no, no, that's 240. It came down at 240. Yeah, I'd still go that we're going to go a little lower. We'll see where this shakes out. Okay, we get those okay. numbers. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 34, NASDAQ up 43, S&P's up 8. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, 6.91 drawdown we in the uh, crude uh, gasoline, 682,000 barrels. And they were looking for uh, 
Well, Bloomberg is we're looking for 5.15, but yesterday uh, that API, uh, that number was big, right? Well, that was number yeah, in the seven, seven plus million. So we get the EIA numbers, 10:30 a.m. Eastern time on Wednesdays. Crude oil inventories falling 6.91 million barrels. To see how that hits the market, jumping back to the charts, and as you would expect, little pop. We were trading at 57.75, coming into that number, right? We're up about 13 pennies, but look at that volatility. We actually spiked to 57.42. It's a five-minute bar there. And uh, looking at both of these contracts, your value would be on the bullish side, of course, now. And that's where you can see you're actually only 25. You need more movement, right? We're yes. looking for 50 we're cents 50, for break right. even on both sides. Right. So you're talking about 57.75. If you were trading this, you needed up to 58.25. But that number, man, declined, falling 6.91 million barrels. And like you said, gas inventory is falling as well, 682,000. And the Bloomberg user survey, they were looking for a stockpile decline of just 5.15. But if you back things up, the um, survey number was only a decline of about 3 million. And uh, scrolling through this quickly to get to that API, as you talked about, 7.23 falling last night for the API. So maybe maybe we're using some oil, man, after that summer break. Yeah. Right. Uh, they're not pumping enough of it. That's well, right. They, One or the other. Yeah. One exactly. or the other. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, the strength versus the weakness uh, inside the Dow first. The Dow doesn't have much action out here today. Let's see what's putting a hammer on it okay so you good old apple apple's got that's up 1.6 and boeing always yeah so you got boeing putting 31 positive points apple 23 caterpillar 10 taken away from it united health minus 22 travelers 9 jp morgan 4 visa 3 nothing big really no did you see uh this morning that it looks like bank of america is going to be for the saudi aramco ipo the oh, underwriter, which a, is kind of quite a revelation there you go uh where was it look at right there, there yeah go. it's in red I, I bet that's, yeah, so that was... Said to pick. That, that's, yep. that's pretty amazing. That, oh, it is amazing in terms of... Uh, that they is are a not, monster. You know, a, a big investment bank house to, to be leading IPOs. Right. And the speculation... They're going to, I see, they're going to join Goldman, J.P. Yeah, Morgan. Okay. they'll be in there. But uh, they're going to be on the top Bank of America. And the speculation was that it's such a big IPO yeah. that they probably came in at a cheaper cost. And, okay. and it's such a mammoth number that when you start talking about percentages right. on the Saudi Aramco IPO, that they probably said, hey, wow. you know what? For the type of percentages we're talking about on the billions and billions of dollars oh, we're going to yeah. come in at, it might make sense to, to go for the cheaper alternative. Yeah. Um, and we'll see if they get what they pay for. But, but the other noteworthy history here is that even choosing the big boys, man, Lyft. Uber, oh, yeah. WeWork, they're, they're not getting it done when it's a bad deal. You know, right. they can't prop up something. So their, their track record for charging premium pricing, which the top banks would, sure. maybe it's not worth it. Oh, that's, that's, that's probably the conversation they went through, and they decided to go for Bank of America in the top billing. They got to be popping some bottles over at Bank of America this morning. My God, Saudi Aramco IPO. Not Seriously. a not a bad not a bad sale to close. So if we take a look at the uh, NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness. You got C Trip out here. Uh, that's, that's that's interesting. That's up 6.3 percent. Illumina is up uh, 3.7. Tesla 3.5. Mercado Libre 3.4. Uh, taken away from it. Win down 2.5. Alexian uh, down 2.4. Monster down 1.8. Eight, no big uh, deal. Yeah. Let me go over there. What's happened with Tesla? Yeah. Well. Maybe they're excited that Apple didn't announce a, an Apple car at their roadshow yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kid, but. Uh, it's not much news, but the bottom line is that this is a highly volatile stock anyway. That's what you come down to. We take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. And you got, uh, look at even the, the Bank of America's even down with that news. That's yeah, interesting. Oof, right? Down 23 cents. You got Micron Tech up a buck 15. This baby's getting smoked. Uh, this is what a. What are we talking about here? Yeah. yeah Zscaler. So, huh? Zscaler. So this is a, a cloud security based. Um, okay. Company. Internet security platform. Yeah. And you're going to see that this is, this is, you know. Six billion dollar company, even yeah. at. This evaluate right. this uh, this price. Oof, hey. man, we were just at ninety bucks. Yeah, well, the, what happened? And this is a new IPO too. Uh, let me see how new okay. it is. Let's see. Yeah, March fifteenth of twenty eighteen at sixteen dollars. You know, they they ran these things up. The in tough a big thing way. is, man, if you're in margin at ninety bucks, you just lost hundred percent of your value. Oof. 
intense. And you can be a margin when you're talking about a year and a half ago IPO. Oh, for you sure. know, that's for sure. For sure. Uh, so big earnings per share miss. There you go. Yeah. Can we just clip maybe and yeah. see if they there we go, good. Oof, so they come in at earnings per share for the fiscal year, 12 to 15. They were looking for 20. <sighs> earnings for number. this quarter, zero to one, one cent. Maybe that's next quarter. Estimate 2.4 cents. Yeah. So they might not even be profitable. Revenue, pretty close to in line, I guess. 89 to 90, the estimate was 87.8. And But fiscal year, not pretty close. 395 to 405, estimate was 402. Yeah, it seems like so. The fourth quarter is probably what they just reported. They actually had earnings of seven versus a loss of maybe one cent. No, that's year over year. Yeah, but estimate that's one cent loss too. So the quarter is all right, but this is this is the number. That's the number. Yeah. yeah. And the number we're saying there is that the estimate, folks, for the adjusted earnings per share for 2020 was 20 cents. Now they're at 12 to 15 because they're hammering this thing. Man. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing you want to see is, uh, you know, saying not even this year, next year. We're in a lot more trouble than we thought. It's Ooh. basically what they said. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, the market, if you're in the public market, you better be growing. You either grow or yes. die. That's, yes. That's, 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 How about uh, let's jump to Disney? Because I'm going to follow on the Apple heels in terms of Disney oh, yeah. reacting yesterday right. to the idea of Apple coming off. Five bucks. Five right? Four ninety nine, man. Quite a price tag. If there's any value to their content, and that'll be the real question, right? Right. But man, if there's any value to their content, 4.99 is worth it. Um, and you, you undercut the giant in the room, which is Netflix and Disney. Yeah. So we'll see how that plays ne out. Netflix. Uh, so Disney, that pulled. But it looks like it's gonna. I, well, we'll see. And 138 to 134.58. And what's remarkable is that big jump in the in this chart was the day that they announced their pricing. For yes. their content, which right. I believe was six or seven dollars. Same yeah. thing, undercutting Netflix. Market loved it, right? Shot from about 117 up to 142 in a heartbeat, and we're now under that at 135. And Netflix really took a beat. They, yeah, because they have their own woes. You know, Disney, man, Disney's Disney's yeah. not going anywhere, right? Yeah. No matter what. Exactly. Netflix went from uh, 297 to 282.63. Pretty remarkable that we're now up, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, at 291. Parent some of those losses on Netflix. And That's down, though, from over 380 just yes. in July. Right. Yeah. What's going to get interesting about that is that, you know, we know that, you know, the interest rate structure keeps going down. Is the pricing model going to keep going down dramatically even on the streaming. I mean, that's what it almost seems like. It's like, yeah. oh, like who's going to get, I mean, remember, if we were talking about last year, we thought Netflix was a great deal at yeah. 11 bucks, yeah. right? Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh. I mean, know. Apple, would they, you know, Apple doesn't need to make money on that, though. Right? I mean, that's where you get into weird aspects of oh, absolutely. And I, I'm sure they actually don't plan the on The same with Amazon. They don't plan on making right. money at $4.99. Right. They right. just plan on keeping you in their ecosystem. Right. And then what? You're subscribing to iCloud memory in Apple. You're exactly. subscribing to other apps in Apple, yeah. the health app, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. We got our man, Mr. Teddy Cakestad, coming back. We are going to be talking currencies. Come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. 
from all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's uh, up 31. Nasdaq's up 43. S&P's up 8.5. Let's look at that oil contract. Yeah, we a little, got bit a little of action. Man, jumping over. And, look, man, you wait a moment. That is a shocker. Look at that. So we were sitting at 57.75 yeah. almost. When we came into that number, we saw the initial spike. We saw a drawdown of more than the market was looking for. And, man, it doesn't matter. Oil trading lower. 57.37 right now in the price of that October crude oil. That's... That says a lot. It sure does, That man. says a lot. No two ways about that. We'll see whether that high volume low is going to get hit. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kenny, Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday. And if you want to know the currency market upside down, folks, every trading day, you can check out uh, Teddy at Forex. Dash trading dash unlock.com. That's Forex dash trading dash unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Oh, it's a beautiful day in Chicago. We actually have warm, warm weather in September. It's a treat. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah, well. It, we'll try and send you some of our warm weather. I, we to got keep plenty it going. of warm weather, man. We we'll just send it your we way. We were just looking at our weather, actually, and it says it's going to be a high of 85 degrees on Saturday, and we both said, I feel like that's going to be storms and clouds because in Florida, we don't get highs at 85 unless right. uh, in, in, September. in September we yeah. don't. But. Wow. Gotta enjoy I'm just glad you guys are in one piece. You guys took, get, survived the hurricane. Yeah, we're in we're the West very, Coast. Really so. lucky. All yeah. of Florida really lucky, man, yeah. in general. So Big thankfully, time. for sure. That was a. That they was get dicey, and all through September, storm. we're keeping our fingers crossed, man. Yeah. Totally. So, what are we looking at? Well, we can talk. We want to start talking about the UK first, or do you want to go to Asia first? Let's Which talk Brexit, like? man. I, I, we never get enough of Brexit. No, it's <laughs> interesting. Let's go. What do we got going on? <laughs> okay. Well, in the past couple days. Now, we know that uh, Boris did the proroguing and what have you, um, and I've done some research, and there's a lot of rumblings about them trying to actually oust Boris Johnson. I don't know how they can do this. I'm not familiar with how Parliament does and doesn't work and English politics work, but uh, over the past couple of days, there's an initiative to find out what, how and how quickly they can have Boris Johnson removed as the prime minister. Yeah. Um, if that was to occur, um, then we know that, well, obviously, there's not going to be a Brexit deal come October 31st. Um, that would be the extensionists would get that, and also the people who are trying to maintain uh, keeping the U.K. as part of the EU and breaking the Brexit deal. Um, so that's a big issue that's on the table. Um, right now, obviously, he's suspended Parliament, and he's going full throttle towards a no-deal Brexit. Um, we've had a lot of issues over the past two days with U.S. companies trying to figure out where do they fall in the, if a Brexit does happen or if it doesn't happen. And like we've talked about before, like we've um, pretty much all agreed, just like the businesses do, that 
whichever way they go, why does business and trade have to be disrupted in the short run? Why can't they just continue as business as usual and hash it out over time instead of trying to do what they're doing right now? Um, so that's a big deal. So I think that you can notice that in the British pound, and it's going to start to surface over the next couple of days, um, where right now it's going to be sideways. And then how we head out of that news, I think, will set the new trend for the pound. It's pretty remarkable that we might get another delay. That's almost the one thing that I was going to bet on as we came into this, right? That this was going to be the hard one, that no delay yeah. took place. And it's it's looking a lot more like that might be a possibility, which well, I should have known. You know, well, like, come on, where was I born sure. yesterday, not paying attention? Another delay, of course. Well, and, and the big deal right. is that the the parliament's not doing their job. That's, that's you yeah. know, that's that's the Votes other side of it. We know sure. politics is politics, but it's, a, it's, 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 that's, it's that's the real bottom It's got to be a frustrating experience as a voter over there. So, Teddy, right. you know, this, yeah. this pound, I, I can see that it's not in the range yet, meaning that, you know, where it broke down from. Um, right. And I guess so this is a kind of a dicey place where it is, right? I mean, it, it, it looks sure. like it can kind of sure. get there, but guess what? If it doesn't get in that range, that, that low is game again probably, right? Right. Well, see, here, here's the way I look at it. Over the past, remember a couple of weeks ago, we had this little turning point where um, the currencies that were against the dollar that had been trending and also the divergent currencies, all of a sudden we had reversals that came in a couple of weeks ago. Yes. So we've had the pound that's rallied against the dollar for a few weeks, and we thought that Boris was actually setting the motion towards really having a Brexit on October 31st. Yes. Now, if you look at the pound versus the yen, Okay. It's had a, the pound has been strong against all the currencies over the past few weeks, especially the euro. Okay. Now, now we're coming into this little question mark of whether they can remove Boris or not or put a stop to him. And I think that that's going to set the pound versus the dollar for a short-term break, you know, um, as far as in uh, momentum, not necessarily a break meaning a slide, but just as far as directionally, I think it's going to be sideways. Um, but what you need to look at is the pound versus the yen. Okay. Um, that looks like it's starting to run out of the gas, like it was a correction. Yeah. Now, if here's the thing is the pound has been strong against the yen. The Aussie's been strong against the yen. The dollar's been strong against the yen, and then so is um, so is also uh, the uh, the Swiss. So now, when you look at this, they're all starting to run out of gas. Now, the yen had been in a strong trend against the dollar for months, just like the Swiss. It was the one divergent currency. Yes. Um, and the past couple of weeks, it hasn't been. Now it's starting to look like the yen bears may run out of gas. So that means if the yen bulls come back. The pound's going to slide against the yen. Right. The other currencies slide against the yen, which also means that dollar strength is not what's going on in the market. It's other major currencies that it's their strength and weakness that's dictating things. Um, and if that's the case, the pound's going nowhere. It's not going to be on a big break, and it's definitely not going to rally. So we're looking at a big sideways nature there, and I think same with the EU. So if you're if you have any currency traders that are out there to trade against the dollar with major crosses, I think you're looking at a big sideways reaction that's going to happen for the next couple of weeks. And you really have to look at more of the exotic crosses. Like if you're a U.S. dollar yen trader, if you want to know direction, look at how it's going against the pound. Look at how it's doing against the Aussie. Look at how it's doing against the Swiss. If you see weakness there in dollar and, and yen strength, then that's probably where you'll see it with the U.S. dollar yen um, cross. And I think yeah. the same is going to happen with the pound as well, because the pound has been trending stronger against all these currencies for two, three weeks. It, now is probably a time where if it's a correction, then the corrections are coming to an end. And if it's actually going to be the beginning of a true trend, we're looking at a time for a pause anyhow. So I think that's what we're looking at for the next week or two. I love this education. Man. Oh, I love it. I know. You know, we just had the chart of that right. pound yen, and it and, is, man. And then, because Teddy, what happens is that uh, I follow the yen real closely, but I follow it the not the only reason, but when the yen is strong, gold is strong like beyond belief, man. Do you know what I mean? Right. The yen moves that, and so like when Tommy had just brought up when you were speaking, we brought up those crosses, and I can see what you're saying, but they are running out of gas, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Well, they look they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, right. So now that would that would support your gold rally. So yes. if this does turn the yen, we're looking at another extended move higher for gold. Right. Exactly. No. And that's what I'm looking for because what gold has done, it's pulled back into a breakout area with dramatically lighter volume. I mean, dramatically lighter right. volume. So it's like okay. Right. And then and we I, said I, the BOJ that did not do anything. They, remember uh, when the BOJ met a few days ago and last week, there was all these rumblings that all of a sudden Japan's going to start becoming hawkish and what have you and whatever. That's not happening. Right. This is not happening. 
Right. You know, and I think that this is going to be, it's going to manifest itself for as far as where's flight to quality in the short run with the trade deals. I mean, I, I think that this little um, inflection point has occurred because it's the stuff that the talks with China have been kind of positive, even though nothing's really resulted over the past couple of weeks. Yes. Heading forward, you think we're going to talk. Yeah. Listen, we all know it's not happening. Right. Totally. Listen, folks, you can check out Teddy every trading day at trade at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, you have a great week, safe week. We look forward to speaking to next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. And tell your people to look at me tonight at 10 o'clock Chicago time on our homepage. We're going to be streaming times. Absolutely. I'm certain we'll do it you up. are Perfect. or strive to Thanks, be one Teddy. of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that will transform me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow does up 51, now it's up 40. S&P's up eight and a half. We have gold up $2.80. And folks, if you haven't check in, checked out the gold report, this is a great time to do it. Come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see it right on the featured content. I'm going to be doing a workshop a week from today. That's right, man. Yep. September 18th, 5 till 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You're going to be in there for an hour with subscribers to the gold report. The title of the webinar you put together the next leg up in gold is 1794. Find out why. 
So you got the topics you're going to be talking about here, some of the charts that you've already pulled together that you're going to be putting together at a preview of the webinar. Pretty cool, man. You were walking me through these as you were putting together that webinar. Gold, quite a market, man. You do talk about it as a small market, but this graph kind of kind of talking about, it man, $110 billion U.S. a day, the gold market. You combine all the S&P stocks, I think you're at about $170 billion. You're looking at the chart here. Pretty remarkable, right, in terms of... It uh, is. And then you get into, this is Japan bonds down here. You got U.S. sterling, and of course, the giant in the room always, treasuries. U.S. treasuries, when we talk about Biggest that bond market. market. Yep. But a mammoth number, 110 billion in terms of average daily trading volume. And then you got, in terms of the returns going in here, over since 71, 20 year, 10 year, gold holding steady, holding steady as well. When you're talking about even since um, the last 20 years, you get into the last 10 years with the way the stock market's performed, yeah. of course, because that's only going back to 2009 on gold. And um, and then just versus fiat currencies, man. That one there is that, that's if, if you happen to be in a car and you have, can't see this chart, folks. This is like insane. And it would make sense in terms of a fiat currency over time does go to zero because inflation is always there. So if right. you take dollars, you put them under your bed, right. and you leave them there for a hundred years, right. you might as well just light them on fire <laughs> because they're not going to be worth anything. Right. If you know in an you have to have it working. So check it out, folks, on the front page. Sign up. You, of course, have a new issue out there on Monday, but they gain access to the archives, and this will be archived for subscribers if you cannot attend live. We get uh, Vegas Swim coming up next. The man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Oh, Go get them, folks.